And we're back with another segment of Black 5 TV. And we're talking with noted author David Drake. Hi. <laughs> I don't feel especially noted, but thank you. <laughs> Some of our readers may not know you that well, so if you would be so kind, please tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born in Iowa in 1945. I graduated from the University of Iowa with a history degree. Uh, about my last semester I noticed that I had 30 semester hours of Latin also, so I went and asked my advisor if I could have a double major. He looked at it and said, well, I guess. So <laughs> I, I have a, a double major in history and Latin. And um, I went on to Duke Law School in 1968, I made the Law Journal and got my draft notice, which, by the way, said greeting, not greetings. And I, I knew enough linguistics to recognize greeting as a Scots synonym for moaning and weeping, which was certainly my reaction to it. I was drafted out of Duke Law School after my third semester. I had two years of the Army, and I returned to finish Duke Law School. As a matter of fact, I got an early out, so that 72 hours after I was sitting in Vietnam waiting for a DC-8 home, I was sitting in the lounge of Duke University Law School. Um, that was the, the government's reintroduction program for veterans. Uh, I finished law school. I got a job as assistant town attorney for the town of Chapel Hill. And um, after eight years of that, I decided I wasn't going to lawyer anymore. So I quit and got a job driving a city bus. I had been writing for, well, I sold my first story in 1966. And I'd had two books come out in 1979. And I quit with the expectation that I would continue to write because, believe me, we needed the money. Uh, I was getting $4.05 an hour as a bus driver, part-time. Uh, maximum 30 hours a week and no benefits. Uh, but as it turned out, the writing took off, which I was not expecting would happen, because I'm not stupid. Uh, but I am apparently very lucky. And since 1981, I have been a full-time freelance professional writer. Growing up, how much military fiction or science fiction did you read? I read all the science fiction I could get, which wasn't really that easy. Uh, the, um, I wasn't buying paperback books or magazines. I, I knew they existed. Uh, I was reading books in the library, anything I could get a hold of. Um, science fiction books, actually pretty much <laughs> all the dog stories, all the horse stories, all the science fiction and, and later all the mysteries because I ran out of science fiction. Uh, I don't mean I liked it all. I didn't. Um, military fiction, not actually much, though a couple of novels do stand out. Uh, when my folks bought me a batch of um, science fiction from a kid entering the Navy, uh, stuck in with it was a a copy of Battle Cry by Leon Uris, um, which I, I read with great interest, but I really didn't appreciate until later. I mean, you know, this really was a veteran's look at the World War II Marines. And um, at some point, I, I actually got a copy I had a friend buy me copies of Playboy so that I could uh, read uh, various serialized novels. Uh, James Jones' Thin Red Line 
being one of them. And actually, the first James Bond book I read was, you know, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, which was why I started this. I looked at the tits also. I mean, you know, I'm not pretending I didn't, but, but I genuinely bought them for the novels. <laughs> or had a friend buy them. <laughs> there was a store near his house that sold them. So I gave him the money and he read them first and I, I assume looked at the tits also. <laughs> but then he passed them on to me. Uh, <laughs> hey, it was a different world. You mentioned that you didn't like all of them. Outside of the ones you mentioned, who were some of your favorite science fiction writers? Oh, uh, that's easy. Uh, Henry Kuttner, um, A. E. Van Vaught. Um, I certainly read a lot of Heinlein. He was not a favorite. Um, read a lot of Asimov. Um, liked him. Um, but I read everybody. But if I were going to pick a favorite writer uh, in science fiction, uh, it would be Kuttner. Uh, the writer who comes, who was it equally had an equal impact on me. It was Robert E. Howard. And his stuff was harder to come by at the time. Um, Gnome Press had released the, uh, the Conan series in, in edited form, but my library didn't have them. So what I had was uh, Conan the Conqueror, which was the flip side of uh, sort of Ryanon. Uh, in a condensed ace version. It was um, Hour of the Dragon. Um, but, yeah, uh, Robert E. Howard and uh, Henry Kuttner, absolutely. And those were really good. I mean, I have no complaints about my taste. My taste was very damn good. <laughs> Outside of science fiction? I read a lot of mysteries. Um, I, uh, Frederick Brown in particular, uh, when I got a little older and started buying paperback books for myself, um, I, I read of, I was reading the Travis McGee books when they came out, but I had been reading John D. MacDonald before then. Uh, his non-series stuff. Actually, the first thing of his I read, and I didn't recognize the name at the time, um, because it was a library book, was John D. MacDonald's Ballroom of the Skies, which, having reread it, it's not especially well written, but it's a hell of a good book. Uh, it, and it is a genuine science fiction novel. It was originally published in uh, Startling or Thrilling Wonder, I believe, like a number of his others. So. Yeah, John D. MacDonald, um, and yeah, of, of course I read the Sherlock Holmes stuff as soon as I could. Uh, oddly enough, one of the first Sherlock Holmes stories I remember reading myself was uh, one of the exploits of Sherlock Holmes, which were written originally by his son, Adrian Conan Doyle, and... Um, John Dixon Carr, who was a huge favorite also. But uh, I think the one I read, uh, that, that I remember very vividly reading initially, was by Adrian Conan Doyle himself. And I don't honestly recall the, uh, the title of it, but it was in Collier's, which we took. And it had a, a two-page spread of this giant spider crawling up out of a wood-burning stove, you know, lifting the lid over the, the burner of the wood-burning stove and looking out at the... Uh, uh, it, it, was a, it was a rewrite of the speckled band with a giant spider, but boy, that worked for me. But you know, yeah, as I say, I mentioned John Dixon Carr. I really liked and like Carr as uh, clever and inventive. 